Hi everybody. A couple of weeks ago I posted a video about melatonin and somebody posted a question in the comment section and so I'm going to read that question out. So the question is if you have a flare-up should you stop or lower the dose and how to know if it's a flare-up or causing extra neuroinflammation. So as per usual, nothing that I'm staying, saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. And if you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider for that advice. Um, so just to give a little bit more background, um, please watch the original video for a full background. Um, but melatonin does lots of things in the body. It's not just for sleep. It promotes uh, nervous system, central nervous system detoxification. It's an antioxidant. It's um, something that's very important for mitochondrial health. It does lots, lots of important things in the body besides just sleep promotion. So um, if a person does start taking more melatonin and they start having detoxification or they start having um, symptoms that are arising, then those could potentially be detoxification symptoms, whether they're detoxifying from their central nervous system, whether they are detoxing from their mitochondria. Um, melatonin has antiviral properties to it, so maybe there's a viral die-off reaction happening. Lots of things that could be happening with melatonin. When uh, an agent, uh, like a, a, a treatment substance, does lots of different things and there's some type of a response to that, whether it's good or bad, it's always a question mark of, well, why are we seeing that response? In what way is it manipulating or impacting the person? physiology so it's just you know, an endless um, joyous sometimes mystifying puzzle um, you know trying to figure out these aspects of treatment and how they impact um, human health so um, in, in my practice I am really a opposed to patients feeling worse. Um, I like my patients to feel better. Um, I think that there's something to be said about encountering adversity in certain parts of our lives. You know, that which does not kill us makes us stronger, but I feel like when it comes to treatment, that adage does not apply. So if my patients are working with melatonin, they're building up their dose and they start to have some symptoms that suggest a detoxification or a die-off reaction or whatnot, then I will typically ask them to lower their dosage down until they get down to the dose that they're tolerating well and then after a little bit in many cases I'll ask them to start building it up again maybe more slowly than they did originally um, so that's the approach that I take some clinicians have other opinions on that and you know again you have to work with your own clinician to figure out what the best approach is for you um, the other part of the question was around how do we know if um, melatonin is causing a flare-up or it's causing extra neuroinflammation so I mean I would I would argue that a flare-up could be in the form of neuroinflammation um, but how would we know if the neuro, if the flare is specifically neuroinflammation? So uh, that would generally be um, if there are symptoms that are um, indicative of the brain being more inflamed. So if uh, now an inflamed brain, we know from the rec the work rather of Dr. Richie Shoemaker, um, where he's you know mapped out this incredibly elaborate uh, set of pathways how neuroinflammation um, and in his model it's caused by mold toxicity but it could potentially be triggered by something else um, can have a lot of downstream effects on different parts of the body ranging from fatigue to chronic pain to um, digestive tract issues to you know uh, um, unexplained weight gain like a whole bunch of different things um, but more typically neuroinflammatory symptoms would be things like you know having headaches or having um, a, maybe an exacerbation of anxiety um, insomnia um, maybe an OCD um, exacerbation things like that so anything where it's like oh it seems like my brain's kind of on fire uh, it is sensory processing issues um, you know being ie being more sensitive to sound or uh, noises or things like that so um, if, if a patient started take if one of my patients started taking more melatonin and they started having some some or any or all of those symptoms popping up I would certainly be thinking maybe there's more neuroinflammation happening here and I would definitely be recommending that they lower their dose um, in terms of other flare-up symptoms um, I mean one could have symptoms that might overlap a bit with neuroinflammation um, that are due to other types of uh, uh, due to other systems being flared up potentially, but um, I, I think it'd be kind of, in for the most part, pretty obvious whether things are, you know, neuroinflammation specifically or maybe something else. Um, generally speaking, though, in, in my practice at least, if a patient's feeling worse, it's always interesting for lack of a nicer way of putting it to try to figure out well why is that happening or to hypothesize why it's happening but pragmatically it's going to be the same same next step anyways it's okay lower the dose maybe eventually increase it again um, but we're going to lower it and because of course you know 
patient's already suffering enough. Uh, we don't want to add to that suffering with you know, some type of a flare-up, uh, whether it's neuroinflammation or something else. So um, thank you for the question. I hope I answered your question uh, questions. Um, if there's any further questions on this topic, don't hesitate to ask further. And for everyone else, um, if you have any questions about this topic or anything else, please post it in the comment section below, and I will do my best to answer as soon as I can.